The Joburg Metro sends out 1.2 million accounts every month. According to city managers, the majority of bills go out accurately and are paid timelessly. But try telling that to frustrated consumers. I queried it, I phoned, I did everything I could. Okay, receiving no help, they threatened to crack my electricity off. He phoned, I phoned, and the account just comes out the same. How can I pay an account that I know that it's not mine? Then they said, um, if you don't pay, we're going to disconnect you and things like that. I mean, it's stressful. We've got to go to job. We come to all the headaches. I mean, it's an ongoing thing, and it's nerve-wracking as well. Sometimes I feel I can't take it. This is Jorison Place, home of the revenue department of the most populous city in the country. It's reputed to be plagued by people problems and process problems. If you want to... And it's meant to be the place where consumers go to for assistance. Single mother of four, Janice Benjamin, has lost count of how many times she's phoned and visited Jorison Place. They haven't responded to me at all. They haven't even acknowledged what I've said. They haven't acknowledged anything, nothing. The problems with her account began two years ago. It was going higher and higher, and every now and then I try and settle a fixed thousand amount in January 2002. In September I paid another 4,000 just to try and bring it down, try and bring it down, but it just kept going up and up and up. Okay, the, the, the thing for me, the worst part for me was in January of 2003, they sent me a final notice, the first letter by the way, final notice, saying that I had an outstanding amount of just over 8,000 rand. That's the full outstanding amount, and it needs to be settled immediately. Okay, I queried it, I phoned, I did everything I could. Okay, receiving no help, they threatened to cut my electricity off. So I felt like I had no choice. I went and I paid the full amount. I paid 8,197, so I settled it completely. The very next account I received in January of this year was over 10,000 rand for one month. Again, I didn't receive help and didn't receive help. And the next account I got said that the previous balance had actually been 18,000 rand, not eight, which doesn't make sense if you look at the prior bills because it was all around 7,000, you know. Um, and now, when we're trying to query it again, they said to us, well, maybe it was a printing error. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be an outstanding amount of 8,000. Maybe it's supposed to be 18,000, but we left out the one. Okay, which is obviously nonsense. So it just jumped from 8 to 18,000 for nothing, on the basis of nothing. And since then, it's been, I haven't paid, I've been paying like 100 rand a month because, I don't know, I can't keep paying 8,000 and 10,000 just to start this nonsense again. So it's been accumulating every single month. By August this year, which is last month, it had, it had reached 15,700 rand. They said they want to settle immediately or the electricity will be cut off. Well, I didn't settle it. And the very next account I got now for September alone is nearly 5,000 rand. So they want me to settle now just on 20,000 rand. Janice Benjamin has a handicapped child. With chronic lung problems, she depends on oxygen. Her nebulizer runs on electricity. Janice is terrified the council will cut her off before trying to resolve what to her is clearly an error. She says she's grown weary of phoning and faxing. I wrote letter after letter and sent faxes and every time I got hold of somebody, when somebody finally answered the phone, they would say to me, you know, they'll try and help and they'll try and assist, fax through everything, fax through this and that and everything which I would fax through, and I'd never hear from them again. Because if I it's fertile ground for political state, parties to make mileage. Both the Democratic state, Alliance and the, the National Party have dedicated councillors um, who deal with account queries. Janice, Shirley and stuff. Look, I'm, I'm going to go into Dorison Street just now. Do you have a, re a receipt for that cheque that you paid in February? Or do you have anywhere where it was acknowledged? Uh, we think maybe that that's part of the problem. Yeah, the 8,197. It's all good and well for me to give an account to somebody and say to them, I would like you to resolve the account. But it becomes overwhelming at a stage where I had to give the 
person bu- busy working with my account, I give her 30 on a, on a week, you understand? Once a week, I give her 30 or 40 of these mistakes. Many billing mistakes go back five years. This is when local authorities of Greater Johannesburg were amalgamated. Accounts for all customers were incorporated into one very large database. But the project wasn't properly managed and errors crept in, thousands and thousands of errors. Some of them have been rectified, many haven't. There's about 200,000 records mismatched between the billing database and the geographic information system. Special assignment has learned that altogether there are close on a million errors in the revenue department system. Richard Pillay of the National Party deals with account queries in Lanasia. Most people here don't have the time or the money to travel to Johannesburg to resolve billing errors. Problems should be sorted out by the council's regional office, but seldom are. The queries uh, involve being overcharged for water, being overcharged for electricity. A person gets a 350 bill. Uh, during uh, meter reading, and then all of a sudden the bill jumps up to about 1,400 then. It's the same person, the same number of people in that household. Uh, they don't all of a sudden develop many factories in the home. It simply means that the system is wrong. The system is fundamentally flawed. Part of the problem means access. Now, when a person lodges a call into, the, into a complaint to the call center, the person calls, makes a call from the public call box. And they are kept holding on for ages. Before they could even lodge the complaint properly, the person is disconnected. Opposition councillors find themselves playing a dual role, that of accountant and therapist. Is it causing you to be stressed that you should get the too much stress? Too much. Sometimes I feel I can't take it, especially like this month's account that I got now, with this reconnection fee. I know I don't know they never cut my water and my but they're writing the data reconnection fee. 450 million rands worth of free services. That's what the Joburg Metro claims it provides to those who can't afford to pay. But opposition parties say there are thousands of applications for indigent support. Many of these have simply been ignored by social services. You applied on the, on the 2nd of October in 2002. Yes, right. Which means that it's a year yeah. and they've not said a word. We've all been the victims of that diabolical statement when a supplier has the audacity to turn around to the customer and say, I'll do it for you as soon as possible, okay? Or worse still, I'm a little bit busy right now, but in fact I'll get back to you as soon as I've got a moment and I'm snowed under with all this paperwork, but I will get back to you, I promise. Peter Shields is a customer service expert and motivational speaker. He says Joburg Metro needs lessons in how to deal with consumer problems. The consumer is getting extremely frustrated at having to try every trick in the book in order to have their problem resolved. Many of the problems are relating to account billings. These billings have been incorrect in, in some cases for up to three years. These are just ludicrous, it's unacceptable. You can't have a, 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 a country that is trying to compete with the rest of the world who cannot resolve a billing problem for over three years. I mean, you shouldn't have that problem for over three weeks, three hours. But here, it is three years, and that is nonsense. Joburg Metro admits it doesn't have enough employees with the necessary skills to work in a high-pressure environment. As soon as we find somebody who's actually rising to the challenge and is dealing with that, um, uh, resolving the queries, solving it, those people are like gold for us. Uh, they tend to go quite easily also. Um, so we have a little trouble of retaining the right caliber of staff, where it's relatively easy to retain people who are not doing the job well. We'll bring more people in. Bring more people in from senior management, from upper levels, to, to man the uh, switchboards, to look after the customers, rather than have them floating around in their large cars, in their large boardrooms, um, fraternizing with other large people. Bring them into the front line. One of Joburg Metro's large people is finance director Roland Hunter. He earns 830,000 rands a year. Too much, says the opposition. If you don't do your work, you should not be paid your bonus, which unfortunately last year was not the case. 
where Mr. Hunter was given 130,000 rand bonus, uh, the highest bonus of all of the council officials, and we think that um, it should not have been awarded. Hello? Meet the reader. Gerbert Metra says errors do sometimes creep in, often because of incorrect meter readings. We put a lot of money this year, this financial year, into trying to make sure that every customer, every meter is read every month. It's not standard practice in many parts of the world, and it wasn't standard practice in the past. But it's part of our trying to solve the problem, is that we do a meter reading every month. But it's also true we can't always get access to every property. Elaine Adams had her meter box removed by the council this year. She had substantial arrears and agreed to pay a fixed amount each month. But for some reason, her payments went into the wrong account. She appealed to the council to sort out her details. Nothing happened, so she was cut off. Her meter box removed. She had to buy a new meter box. But now, she says, her bills don't reflect the reading on the meter. The problem is that they do an interim. I will have to do it with the meter. So that I can see what I have to pay for, because I can always double check. They do an interim. The thing is so, then it's not credit, then it's not credit. And I don't know how to do it. I mean, I want to pay for it. I want to pay for it. City Power reads meters on behalf of the council. It says consumers can't expect immediate action once a meter is replaced. Now that adjustment would not happen overnight. There's a process that gets followed um, by the billing station to do that adjustment. But in customers' eyes, you would want to see that if you fix my meter this month, next month I want to be billed on the meter that you've installed this month. It's a question of uh, customers understanding the processes that happen for every account to be sorted out if there's a query on it. Collecting revenue from tenants and landlords, that's one of the biggest problems faced by the Joburg Metro. To aid revenue collection, Section 118 of the Municipal Systems Act was introduced. It holds landlords liable for the arrears of their tenants. There's a particular issue around tenants, especially in a city tenants, is that they turn around very quickly. So, I mean, they've moved into a flat and two months later they move out again. Uh, from our point of view, that's a very difficult management problem. Um, that customer probably doesn't pay anything for three months. Uh, and then they go, just as we're about to cut them off. Now we can, then need to deal with somebody, uh, a new tenant, and we have to actually write off the balance. So the, all the controversy around Section 118 um, does pose very significant challenges for us going into the future. Two High Court judges in Port Elizabeth have declared Section 118 unconstitutional. They say it interferes with owners' property rights. Landlords need a clearance certificate if they wish to sell their properties. The council won't issue these certificates unless arrears have been paid. A group of property owners has joined forces to fight Section 118. They're known as the Transfer Rights Action Campaign, or TRAC. Some of them are being held liable for arrears in excess of 100,000 rand, run up by their tenants over long periods. Lawyer Robert Martindale is acting for TRAC. They're awaiting a constitutional court decision on Section 118. Over the last 18 months, I've received in excess of 400 letters and telephone calls from owners. And um, what the main complaint is, is that um, the arrears that tenants owe have risen to huge proportions. Um, when they've gone to the municipality and asked the municipality to cut the services, uh, the municipality has failed to do so. One of his clients is property owner Bill Golding. He says Joburg Metro allowed his tenants to run up substantial bills without disconnecting. One was about uh, 35 and that was about 55,000 rand. 
I don't know how they do credit control and let it run up to that kind of level before they start taking any serious action. There are quite a few cases out there where we haven't actually taken action and larger bills have, have been run up. Um, and the ideal is we should be dealing with them after 60 days and we shouldn't allow the, the services to, to be, uh, the bill to continue mounting at that point. If the Constitutional Court rules that Section 118 is invalid, council will have to try to find the original tenant and recover the money. And they might also have to refund money to people that have paid um, because many owners paid merely to get the transfer to be registered. Um, many landlords paid the tenants arrears so they could lease their premises to new tenants and get new contracts uh, opened. And those owners and landlords might well have claims against the municipality for a refund of those monies. So that'll be a whole exercise of going back, <laughs> uh, going back to the billing database, just checking all of those transactions, finding out how many of those were landlord transactions on behalf of tenants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's it's a very big, very big exercise. It's quite reasonable to look for a phasing period. Property owners say they cannot imagine Joburg Metro being able to deal with such an exercise. I uh, started to think it's going to be a lot of a lot of work for them to now get everything sorted out. They're probably going to have to write off the bills, which they actually stand very, very little chance of recovering in many cases anyway, and get everything back up on track and running and get the accounts in order. Cases of billing errors are legion. You only got to open any newspaper or any local newspaper, and the letters columns are just full of people complaining about billing and meters not being read and uh, interim amounts being put on which bear no relationship to what's used. So I think the council is going to have to move into the 21st century and get their billing up to standard. Um, I wanted to pay three five. Uh, yeah. Jared Metro says the public doesn't realize what sort of people it has to deal with. There are a lot of people who pretend to be indigent and they're not. There are a lot of people uh, who pretend to have an error and they're not. Et cetera, et cetera. A lot of the names which have been on the front pages of the paper, indignant at the action we've taken about them, actually they're now settling, actually they're now giving us money, some very prominent people as well. Um, and, you know, the noise in the paper is all part of them trying to avoid paying their debt. There's a lot of that stuff. It's not an environment where you can trust people, unfortunately, and it's to do with the fact that it affects your pocket. Um, and everyone would prefer not to pay these large amounts of money. Uh, yes, that's fine, you know, but you are getting services, you're getting water, you're getting electricity, there are roads around, etc., etc. All of that are charges for which people are legally liable, and we have to collect it. That's all very well, say consumers, but all they're asking for is that phones be answered, that queries be resolved quickly and efficiently. There's this, this great big amorphic mass of incompetency and people who are entitled to their jobs but are not prepared to take responsibility for them. If they, the Metro Council, can simply give us a facility where they respond to our problem and resolve it, all these issues will simply disappear. Managing an account is not rocket science. It just um, takes a lot of resources, a lot of people, and it needs good coordination. And we're not seeing good coordination, we're not seeing uh, enough people doing enough hard work. I think sometimes it's easier to put your collect call to God than it is to get through to somebody of any authority at the council. Have we even acknowledged that there is a problem? People have just said, oh, look, it sounds ridiculous, but nobody's actually gone into it and come back to me and said, you know what, this doesn't make sense, that, that's not possible. Nobody has said, we've seen the problem, we're going to try and sort it out. Nobody has said, we understand your situation at home and, you know, we'll do what we can do. That's what they can come take out and tip us out of candle and, and pay us in them to get it better. Because I am a pensioner, how will I be able to pay all that money? Joburg Metro says it can only give Dulcie Bumji a subsidy if social services gives them the go-ahead. But social services has apparently exhausted its budget. The council has advised her to go to Jorison Place to make an arrangement to pay off her arrears. Joburg Metro Council maintains that Elaine Adams' payment did not go into the wrong account. They say she was disconnected because she stopped payments and that her account was in arrears. 
Bill Golding has still had no communication from the council, despite numerous faxes and phone calls. He's now awaiting the Constitutional Court decision on Section 118. As for Janice Benjamin, Joburg Metro says according to its record, she missed a payment of 8,000 rands. Then she made only small payments, after which her arrears began accumulating. The council could not explain its inability to communicate with Mrs. Benjamin, nor the threat to cut her off, despite a medical letter about her daughter's condition.